thanks to that speaker. We now like to welcome the first uh, opposition speaker to give the first opposition speech. When Uhuru Kenyatta killed 1,200 of his own people for no other reason than that they opposed his election, he renounced his presidency and became a war criminal. As such, not only does he deserve a trial, but Kenya deserves the justice and stability associated with that carriage of justice. It is under this understanding that we are proud to come to under the team line that the interests of Kenya are very different from the interests of Kenyatta. I will be doing two things in the speech. Firstly, showing you that a trial at the ICC would have and will be a very good thing for Kenya and its president. But secondly, that there is massive harm to a withdrawal, both societally and in terms of the democracy and the functioning of the government in Kenya. My second speaker, Bettina, will then extend our case by showing that we further undermine Kenya via this action by undermining their relations with the international community. Now, before I jump straight into my case, which is going to directly rebut their matter, I'd like to do two points of context. Firstly, what are we evaluating in this debate? Because we think, one, we're evaluating the decision to try and pull out itself. We think most of our harms stand on the attempt alone. But secondly, we're also evaluating the outcome. Because we think the merit of a decision is only based on the value that its potential outcome would have had if it did come about. The second point of context is what is the interest of a nation? Because we think they haven't characterized that at all. We think firstly, it's about the people, not only individual groups within the society, because the government has a mandate to care for everyone, but secondly, societal cohesion as a whole. But additionally, it's about governance. And when we say governance, we don't mean the specific government in existence right now. We mean the perpetuation of a functioning democracy and the institution within that country. They are going to need to deal with this distinction later in my speech. So with that being established, let's go straight into the first point, which is why a trial would actually be a good thing. And the conclusion here is twofold. One, there is no act of harm to that trial. But secondly, it's actually positive. So let's look at this in two paradigms. Firstly, let's look at political functioning. And here we directly rebut what they were saying about the lack of stability, because we just say that the country isn't that severely undermined. One, Kenyatta can continue his involvement. We think there are large breaks in the trial where you can return to your country. But secondly, that developments in technology which allow CEOs to run businesses from across the world mean that he could do the same thing. Why does he have to be there? But secondly, if he's guilty, he's replaceable. Not only because it's not just the vice president and a few people who are lined up to replace him, but because countries have a long line of contingencies which are designed to follow democratic principles of who should be in power next. But also that when the president is removed, for example by assassination, we just hold another election and determine what the democracy wants then. So we just don't think there's a big problem. What they said here was two things. Firstly, that he's a figurehead. Now we'd argue, is someone a good bastion of peace if half the population is scared that they will kill them if, he opposes, if they oppose his election? We just don't think that that's the kind of thing we want. But secondly, that their whole paradigm of the fact that he creates good policy was premised, and I quote Kate here, on his good relations with the international community. Does he really have good relations anymore now that they want to prosecute him and most of the world powers want to put him on trial? So if that's all you're relying on, it's just not enough. But the second thing to look at is the outcomes of his trial. Because we'd say there are two possible outcomes. And this is going to address his possible guilt and his legitimacy as a president. If he's guilty, he's proven to have killed people. Why is his removal good? Well, firstly, we'd say if that's proven, the election was initially coerced. So we think he killed a bunch of people before the vote took place, and therefore that vote Gosh. wasn't good. But secondly, that we would say that he's actively violated the mandate of governance. Because even if a majority votes for a president and says that they are the one they want, if he has actively violated the mandate by killing a minority in that country, we don't support his presidency, we don't believe he's legitimate. So on those grounds, if he's guilty, this is good. But if he's innocent, it's even better. Because if he is innocent, according to what Kate analyzed and said was fact, then this absolves him of guilt. He no longer has a loss of buying from a major group in his society, and the whole of moral society who just doesn't like it when people die. No, sit down. The second question to then look at is justice. And here the first thing to establish is that there is just no opportunity cost to local justice and reconciliation in Kenya. Because let's look at the facts. Firstly, the regime is completely denying a problem. So we don't think they're just saying we don't want to try it. We think they're saying that we didn't commit a crime. That means that he's unlikely to go through any reconciliatory process. Secondly, even if there was an acknowledgement, we think there's presidential immunity from trial. So he can't go through a trial. But third, even if he wasn't immune, there's no political will. Who is going to arrest the president of a country if the police and the government all support him? And lastly, even if they arrested him, we would say there isn't a carriage of accurate justice. One, because he struggled to get witnesses. 
When a trial takes place in a country, those witnesses are at risk from the majority. That's why even the International Criminal Court is struggling. But secondly, the courts themselves are biased. Because A, we think in less developed democracies, they aren't oh separate gosh. from governance institutions. In fact, in Kenya, they're appointed directly by the president himself. That means that their justice just doesn't stand. But let's look then at why we do get justice from the ICC. And this is going to directly about their point that there's some kind of cultural relativism and Western bias. And we just say that's not true. The ICC is not based on ideals of cultural relativity and what each society believes is right. It's based on things like we don't like mass murder and genocide, the kind of principles which every culture in the world should accept. That means that not only does this court hold authority for every single culture in the world, we would assert, but that secondly, if it doesn't, even that it should be asserted and the victims will still receive justice and still feel like that court is doing something valuable. The truth of the matter is that we get value and we get the political functioning of Kenya. But then let's secondly look at why pulling out would be incredibly harmful. And here we analyze two harms. Firstly, it's a good society. And the question to ask is what message is being sent when you say you want to pull out of the ICC? We think the first thing is that you're actually rejecting the validity of the charge. So their whole line of, well, the West is just forcing this on you is actually saying that the West is forcing this on you and it's illegitimate, right? That it isn't a Western, that this isn't a real crime in Africa. It's just some Western idea. So that means the government is actually saying we don't think those deaths were wrong. But secondly, it's saying that even if we accept they were wrong, we think that the victims and justice is less important than the president himself and his role in the country. Now, what effect does this have? Firstly, let's look at victims. And we'd say, A, they're robbed of justice. They're robbed of retribution. Why is this bad? Because justice is an absolute principle. They need to show us why we ever violate justice based on utilitarianism, because we don't think that's true. We take away mothers from their children because they committed crime. But secondly, we say we make people feel unsafe in their own societies. That if they're worried about persecution, because A, now there's real impunity, there's no international criminal courts, but B, the government has said that there's no problem with the crime, they feel persecuted. Let's look not only at why this harms the victims, but also on a second level why it harms societal cohesion. Because we say the victim group goes through one of two effects. Either they pull themselves out of that society and create division, like we saw with Native Americans during the invasion of America, or they become actively antagonistic due to persecution and a feeling of persecution like Muslims in France. Secondly, we'd say that other groups feel impunity to target that group if they don't support the government, which means that you lose direct conflicts between the two groups. That is incredibly bad for a country. They need to show us why we should accept people fighting with each other and not receiving justice they should receive. But secondly, we tell you that there's an active problem with democracy. Because why? Let's use the exact same analysis I just told you. People fear that this is going to happen again. Not only does that undermine discourse in a country, because who's going to speak out against the president who's been shown to kill people who don't support him? But secondly, it affects voting. Why? Because if you're worried and paranoid about the secrecy of a vote, or if you're worried that a government who loses power will once again blame its opposition and kill you, we don't think you're going to vote against that government. So we think that you actively undermine the incentive of different groups who oppose Kenyatta to vote against him, undermining the permanency and the, of his institution, undermining the institution of governance. But the last thing they need to show us is that even if they prove some kind of short-term harm, why we wouldn't prioritize the long-term? Why we wouldn't quell some short-term uprising against your president being removed in order to perpetuate justice in a society, in order to perpetuate democracy? Ladies and gentlemen, we've let them play around with us once. We aren't doing it again. I'm proud to oppose.